tell him I'm done. Do you ever just have an entire journal and just write down, tell him I'm done? Yeah. <laughs> The confession. Wait, before the confession. I can't do this anymore. He's already talking, what? so. This. What, mornings? No. All of this. You mean the deal? Afraid so. What do you mean? You, you need better pay? Different hours? No, nothing like that. I'm just, you know, done with this. Uh, uh-huh. Okay. You wanna... Sure. Yeah. Can you sure. turn it up? I can't hear it. Here you go. So, you, uh, you're done, huh? Yep. You do understand what that means, right? Does it have to mean anything? It doesn't work like that. You know that. Man, I must be getting forgetful of my old age. Uh-huh. Nothing I can do to change your mind. Um, am I... Like hallucinating, or do pigs not have nipples on their chins? Am I not remembering what pigs look like? I don't know. Thank you for I'm the afraid fist, Gabriel Dav. Hmm. Thank you so much. Well, let's go get some coffee. Talk things over. Come on. Dun dun. I'm trying to be diplomatic with the mob guy. Oh. The breakfast. So basically, we dispose of bodies mm, for the mob. Mm, mm. Smells delicious as always. Ah, Sadie was the real cook. Hey, don't sell yourself short. Not much that's better than your home-cooked eggs. Hope you don't mind. I left out the bell peppers this time. Mm, can't stand them. Sadie liked peppers. I'm humanizing myself. <laughs> Sadie always liked peppers, though, so... I put up with them. Not to change the subject, but how long have we been doing this for, you think? Fifteen years, just about. Ah. Summer of 78. Why we meet? What was it? Bill was sick. So I'm trying to make him see us as, like, human as possible, if that makes sense. <laughs> Like, oh. Trying to try to butter him up a little bit. So yeah, we don't Bill get in was trouble. sick, so I needed money, not I needed cash. Mm -hmm. Bill was sick. And you couldn't afford a doctor. We couldn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if we, if we seem greedy. No, we could not. So you needed my help. <sighs> you were God's. Well, here's what I remember. I had a problem that night, and Jimmy was trying to help me solve that problem when who should come in through that door but you? Um, something about this guy is off. Like, he's too long. His arms are too long. Is that what you think when you see people taller than you? Something's not right. Okay, but Stacey, They're look at long. the length of his arm. If you saw this person in real life, would you not think that they were a slender man? His, his elbow goes down to his waist. Which is... It's too. It's too much. It's too much. All right, I'm not insane here. Don't gaslight me. This man is an alien. He looks completely normal. He does me. not look normal. Something's mm -hmm. not right about yeah. his arms. Totally normal. He's shaped like Slender Man. This is the same body model as a Slender Man video game wow. character. Wow. If body they reskinned, bitch. If they reskinned this man, he would be Slender Man. Mm -hmm. Well, I may have been a little tipsy. <laughs> I drove you home that night, as you're so fond of telling me. Uh, Jimmy knew we could help each other, so he called up Tony. We agreed, made a deal. We all agreed. Ugh. Anyone ever tell you you're no good at making coffee? Sadie did, because I'm a person. Sadie did, all the time. Thought you'd have got it better by now. Well, Sadie made the coffee. I made the bacon. No subtitles? Uh, it's good bacon. I had it. Hold on. You know, when I was a kid, I thought pigs were all pink with curly tails. Yorkshires are. Mine a red waddle. American breed. 
not a lot of them out there, you know. Well, not a lot of them can that eat a, a human body mm -hmm. like mine can. Always thought it'd be nice, you know, to raise pigs that was different. I had some Yorkies way back. Must have been, I don't know, before the service. The mm, long time ago. Yeah, I'm an old man. <laughs> you and me both. So why the Waddles? Huh, funny name. Like I said, American breed. Nearly went extinct. Thought I'd do my part to keep them alive. And that tastes good. If the pigs eat you human flesh and you eat the pigs... You know, pigs, the other day, I was reading the paper. Look at you, an intellectual. <sighs> it, maybe. Maybe. Anyways, I read that pigs were as smart as us. You believe that? No. Mm, not uh, particularly. I do just want to point out for the chat that the, the red wattle pigs do have those little things on their chins. The nipples? Yeah, the so it's a specific... Well, I think it's that's the why they're called wattles. Because mm. that's the little chin wattle thing. They creep me out. <laughs> uh, you going somewhere with this? I suppose, though, not particularly. Uh, He's probably going to say, like, oh, pigs are smarter than us, and yet we kill them. I kill people. What's the difference? No, they're not as smart as us. They are smart, but I know what he's trying to do. Mm, not particularly. <laughs> yeah, cows, I get. Cows are dumb. They're afraid of those, uh, uh, you know, those metal bars in the ground. Cattle grid. Cattle grid. Cattle grids, huh? Yep. Well, my point is... Cows are dumb. Pigs, I read, are smart. And you, uh, you read that in the paper. <laughs> I did. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Do you think the pigs know? Know what? That they're food. Oh, pigs don't think like that. How do you know? Because I know pigs. Pigs ain't like us. Well, sure, they're smart. They eat, they sleep, but they do not plan. They don't think about the future. Oh, and I life. suppose you do? I yeah, know. Every man does. <laughs> I think I'm just about finished up here. What do you say I, um, what do you say I accompany you today? What? How do you reckon? Well, my visits are always so short. Figured I could help you out with some chores. Are you gonna Maybe figure out what's going pigs? on with your little sports truck in the garage. As long as you're okay with shoveling manure first. What about your sidekick? Protégé. When I retire, he'll be the man you'll be dealing with. Good guy. Smart. Discreet. Mm, ambitious. Like you, I guess. But, uh, listen. I told you already. I'm quitting. Well, I'll see. Nope. Nope. Something's not right. Completely normal. No. Something's not right about him. Totally normal. Okay, so look, there's like these square things, so I guess... I guess these are our like objectives for our chores, maybe? Oh! oh. Huh. I've always wondered what was in this shack. Happy now. Figured it was... Just some old shack at first, but every time I asked what was in there, you haven't been forthcoming. I have not, no. Tried to take a look in the window once. <laughs> Did you now? Uh-oh, what's in the shack? Ta-da! <whistles> Beautiful, right? Pop machines. Here I figured you had a deep, dark secret. <laughs> we have a deep, dark secret. This here is one of my hobbies. What, collecting them? Well... Sure, I collect them, I guess, but that's not really the point. Is there a point to any hobby? Uh, it depends. What I meant was that it's no fun to just collect them. I, I fix them up. That's where the real fun is. Mm, that makes sense. Oh. You, uh, you got any hobbies yourself? Hmm? Me? Well, well, who else am I talking to? <laughs> I mean, who doesn't have hobbies? Well, what's yours? Some people uh, don't. Reading, I guess. Reading isn't a hobby. Yeah, of course it's a hobby. <laughs> what do you think libraries are for? Everyone reads. Heck, I read the paper every day. But reading isn't a part of your personality. It's just a thing people say they do when they don't have any other hobbies. You really believe that? Mm-hmm. I knew someone who read every single day. She said she loved the smell of books, the texture of the 
of the pages on her fingers. She even bound any books. Of these. Her hobby wasn't reading, it was books. You put too much thought into this. Well, a hobby is something you do because you're passionate about it. If it's something you're not wholly in love with, then you're still trying to figure out what your hobby is. So, you got a problem with my passion? Well, no, no, you said I guess. No one says I guess when they love something. Is love a requirement for a hobby? Absolutely. Oh. Love's a requirement for many things. Ah, uh, and so you love fixing soda machines? Mm-hmm, that is correct. Why? It relaxes me. I just, I don't know, soda machines. It's an unusual thing for a man to want to fix. Don't people get paid to fix them? It is unusual, but when the missus and I would get into fights or when things was bad or I was anxious, well, I don't know. Sadie's sister, when she passed, told me that, uh, told me that it was all right to cry, that it wasn't weakness, that it was okay, and... I remember sitting there in that empty living room with everyone murmuring and telling me how sorry they were, and I didn't feel like I needed to cry. Didn't you miss her? Of course I did. Still do, but I don't know. Not everybody needs to cry. I don't need to cry. I don't get in that way, you know? Weakness? No. I don't know what she was talking about, weakness. Crying never felt weak to me. That's just not how I am. I can't remember the last time I cried. Maybe that movie about the boy and his dogs? Oh, always cry over that one. Dogs are good. Innocent. Yeah, when a dog dies, that always moves me to tears. Not like people. But Josie insisted. Then she kept insisting. Then, psh, I don't know, I think she got offended I wouldn't cry as if she loved Sadie more than me. And she made me feel like I was, I was something wrong. Of course, that wasn't true. There was nothing wrong with me. I just didn't, I, I didn't, I wasn't like that. It wasn't what I needed. It wasn't how I needed to grieve. This is how I grieve, this right here. When I got a problem, I fix it. And when I fix it, I fix a little part of me. And I don't know how or why, but it's healing. It's a healing thing, and that's why a man's got to have a hobby. Sorry, I... No. No, it's all right. I, I figured, you know... I figured if someone's got to know... This is my quiet little hobby. A thing I do to help me work out my worries. Well, it looks like you fixed this one up real nice. <laughs> I'm proud of it. Proud of all of them. But I'm proud of this one most. Thank you for taking the time to show me. There's a... Uh, there's another reason I wanted to show this to you. Mm, what's that? If you want it, it's yours. <laughs> what am I going to do with a pop off. machine? Well, grab yourself a nice, refreshing drink of soda every so often, you big dummy. <laughs> Wait, I, 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 I couldn't possibly. Yeah. Please. A little memento of our time together. Oh, Come on, Memento. Let's keep this train rolling. We can work something out. You come on back by, pick up the soda machine. Take it home with you. Or don't. If you really got no use for it, I won't be offended. I'll think it over. What's next? That was like a really cool conversation mm -hmm. between two men, I think. Mm -hmm. But like usually I'd be like, oh, this is toxic masculinity. But since these both these men deal in like murder, maybe they don't feel as strongly as other people, which I think is fine. Oh, the whole not crying thing. Yeah, the not crying thing because he didn't say he thought it was made him weak. He just said I don't need to do that, and he has other ways of processing his emotions. Mm -hmm. And like while it's totally one thousand percent true that a lot of men. Do you repress crying? I think maybe for this particular man, like, people are born with a spectrum of emotions, and some people are really more naturally sensitive, and some people are naturally less sensitive. And they were talking about how they, like, really, really like dogs. And some people with, like, antisocial um, 
tendencies tend to like dogs more than people and people like assume that means that they're a bad person but usually that comes down to like how they were raised and stuff because like dogs to people like that just make more sense I, i'm just trying not to have any negative connotations along with like what i'm trying to say hmm. is that like it i think the main character I don't think he's, like, repressing emotions. I think that's just how he deals with them. Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, I, I don't I don't think that, like, the flag for me is always when people say things like, I can't cry or I won't because, like, you mm-hmm. know, for whatever reason, as opposed to just, like, eh, that's just, like, not my response, you know? Yeah, because he was explaining that he did have an emotional response. He just didn't do it via crying, Mm -hmm. which I think is very different than someone saying, I don't allow myself to cry, or I haven't cried since I was a kid, or, like, crying makes me feel, like, really weak and vulnerable. But he just said, I just don't cry. I come in here and I fix things, and that's how I process how I feel. Um, yeah, well, I think, like, some people, it's like, it's like any other emotional response, which is, like, some people, certain responses make them feel relieved, and other people feel relieved from other types of responses or processing methods, so I don't think it's necessarily bad if people are, like, the not crying type. I, it only seems weird to me when people are, when people seem to have when that seems to be the loaded question, yeah. you know, like they treat it as if it would be a horrible thing if they cried. And it's like, well, that's not necessarily true either, you know? Yeah. I was wondering if this was setting it up that like, since they both are people who kill others or are actively involved in the killing of others in one way or another, it seems like it would make sense that these two are less emotional than most other people. Mm -hmm. Be it how they were born genetically or how they were raised or whatever. Um, It definitely pointed out that they have tendencies to empathize more with dogs than with people and have, um, I don't want to say limited, but have like less intense emotions than other people. I mean, I think that you can become desensitized to anything. Yeah, you know? that's true. Because, like, there's certain things that I'm very desensitized to. Yeah. Just cause... I just want to, like, I specifically I want to say that, like, some people are just born with less emotions, and then that's, like, really stigmatized in TV, and they're like, they're psychopaths, so by default they're going to, like, kill you. And... Research has shown that the majority of the time, people who are diagnosed with ASPD are not likely to kill you unless, like, they grew up in a really shitty household. So it's, I don't know, just some people just have less emotions, and it's not always bad. Mm -hmm. Like, totally sane people kill each other all the time, but they always have to say it's for whatever reason. Okay. This guy never lets me behind his back, probably because he thinks we're trying to kill him. Did you open the journal already? Tell him I'm done. Move the manure, milk the goats, feed the horse, throw sh- horseshoes, check the shed. So it's just so everything these are that's smart. little things that we're going to do. I'm just going to jump over the fence and see if you can... Oh. Damn it. Oh, oh, maybe I can just... Okay, I'll use the gate. (laughs) Where's the gate? Help! Get wrecked, dude. You can't get me. Wait, let's see how he paths out. Okay. The horse. Don't you own a tractor? What's that got to do with anything? Well, pigs, I guess. Goats, too. Some fellas have chickens and cows. That's all well and good, but what's the point of a horse? Horses are God's most beautiful creatures. <laughs> what? You just keep a horse around because they're beautiful? Horses belong on farms. Uh-huh. Ah, 
Haven't got a saddle for him, so you don't ride him. He's no racehorse. Can I just have a pet? Eat him. Am I allowed to have pets? No. What's the point? Well, I don't see the point in a farm without a horse. I gotta have a horse. Uh, and what's this about them being beautiful? Beautiful, really. Beautiful, he says. Spindly legs and bloated bellies and those weird, weird teeth. Sleep standing up. <laughs> Who sleeps standing up? Something wrong with that. Aren't you going to say something? I... I feel like this scene is pointing out to the fact that this guy doesn't understand the concept of something that you just have to enjoy. Kind of like mm -hmm. how he said he didn't have any hobbies. Like, he likes to read, but... Like, th this compounded with the other hobbies thing, it's like, seems like he doesn't really have something. This, the, the man who we're trying not to get it, to kill us, he doesn't have, I think what it is, is that he looks at things as a means to an end, or that there has to be like a point or an objective to it. With hobbies, there isn't necessarily an objective. And with a, like a pet, like a true just pet, there is no objective to the animal because if you're on a farm, all the other animals he mentioned, like... Have a purpose. Yes. Yeah. So, I think it speaks to this guy. Obviously, he's a bad person. Okay. Are we a bad person? As, as in, like, are we the character a bad person? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, I think it speaks that these two men who commit, like, these really atrocious... This atrocious crime. This is a horrible crime. Mm -hmm. um, it gives you some perspective on... They don't even really feel that bad about it. And this guy's just kind of tired of doing it and just wants to retire more than, like, anything. But I think it's interesting how this guy continually shows that he doesn't value happiness as, like, a goal. Because I think maybe accomplishing goals is what makes him happy. Anyway. One day. One day maybe this feller will understand. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Uh, to me, I mean. I keep apples here because he likes them. Likes the salt lick, too. Want to feed him one? Uh, nah, I'm good. Suit yourself. All right, here you go, boy. No, no, I gotta get going. Why don't you walk on out to pasture rest a spell? He yeah, was already doing it before you told Horses him, give so. me the willies. <laughs> Can't see why. See, I'm interested to see the throwing horseshoes thing, because he's obviously going to be like, why? Mm -hmm. So we're throwing shit at a thing? Well, no, because the goal is to win. Therefore, there is a point. Oh, okay. Yeah, Ooh, if we beat him, he's going to get pissed. No, he doesn't seem like the, like the type to have a temper. Why he seems like the type to, in, to inwardly hold on to that for the rest of his life and ask you to play horseshoes every single time so he can beat you. So why horseshoes? Why not? Well, why not horseshoes? Doesn't it feel stereotypical? Well, look around you. My nearest neighbor lives so oh, half a mile down the road. It ain't the city. We don't have nightclubs and pool halls to go hang out at. Pool halls? What is this, 1890? This is 1992, friend. We got shopping malls for teenagers, restaurants, clubs, whatever. But pool halls? I don't even know if they had those when I was a kid. Uh-huh. Well, time doesn't pass out here as quickly, I suppose. No need for all that, uh, uh stimulation. Ah, so you play horseshoes. Mm-hmm. Or read a good book? Develop photos you took for yourself? Go fly fishing? Well, it sounds idyllic. Quaint, but I do like. And you just want to give up this home-cooked paradise? Hmm. Oh. What? I think that that was like you tried to say it, but he can't bring himself to say it. Maybe. Hmm. That's lonely too. We could get you a nice place in the city. Ah, never was one for crowds. Thought you said you were lonely. I'd be just as lonely in a crowd. Oh, boy. Sadie, she, uh, nobody else could really see me, understand what I was. How do you figure? I, I, uh, what? After 
Saigon what? when I got back. You got back. it because it's going to arc. All these people were hugging their loved ones or protesting or whatever. And I don't know. I never felt more alone in all my life. I was home. I should have been happy. And, and I wasn't. Well, it wasn't a popular war. You lost friends too, right? Yeah. But, uh, Wow, we I got home. This. Yeah. It was dark, and there was Sadie waiting for me. Porch light like a halo around her head. And I knew I wasn't alone anymore. Hmm. So you came back to your high school sweetheart? Yeah. I, I, thought, I, I thought he'd have married her by then. I didn't think she'd wait for me. <laughs> Why not? You're a handsome guy. I bet all sorts wanted you, especially back then. Women love a man in uniform. <laughs> you I mean, see that house on the hill? Well. Uh, what, the uh, burned out one? I always wondered what happened there. Gary Gordon. Of I the won. Gordon family. That's what's important. Went to high school with us. But, uh, well, most of us were farm folk. Sadie, her dad, was the county judge, so for us, that's pretty high society. <laughs> the Gordons owned a lot of land, and all of that passed to Gary after his ma died. In high school, he'd been our quarterback after his pa paid off the school, but ah, he wasn't a bad athlete. Good-looking guy? Oh, a real James Dean. And he had eyes for Sadie. That poor farm boy who couldn't play on the team versus the star quarterback... Shit, what kind of contest was that? Hey, who wouldn't want all this? <laughs> Man, yet, when I came home, there she was. Where was Gary? He served too? Ah, oh, Gary died. was too rich to serve. Star quarterback had some health exemption. Didn't get drafted. Uh-huh. Uh, so then, where was he? Running his dad's business. Trying to win her heart. <laughs> Didn't work. Well, she invited him to the wedding. I didn't want him there, but, well, you know Sadie. She really um, wanted to fuck this guy. Yeah. That man's name? Donald Gordon Trump. owned most of the property around here, including the 200 acres surrounding that hill. Right. And he built a house. A house? W wait. That house? The very same. Looks like it was a mansion. It was. Why'd he build it? Uh, I don't know. To remind her what she'd given up, maybe. So? What happened to the wealthy Gary Gordon in his mansion? Well, he built it one year. Must have been 1966 or so. And wow. he went inside and he just disappeared. Then one night, about a year later, there was a storm and boom. No more Gary Gordon. We killed him. No more Gary Gordon. That sounds so huh. Yeah, we killed him. He was lonely too. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. All right, you win. What next? Uh, so we killed that guy, right? <laughs> like, for sure. My wife's ex-boyfriend, he built a house just to show me up. He disappeared soon after. Oh, what happened? Nobody knows. I thought they were implying that he killed himself. I... Oh. It would be more fun if... If he didn't. If he didn't, and we murdered him. Mm -hmm. And fed him to our pigs, and that's where we got the idea. For pig farming. Mm. And then Sadie was like, I support you 100%. The goat. You know, back home they call you the pig farmer. That description is apt. And yeah, <laughs> you also have goats. I do also have goats. And a horse. And I had a dog. Tried cows once. Bill raised a neuter or something, but, uh, well, it died. Well, most people have, I don't know, chickens and cows. You got goats. Hmm. Is that, uh, judgment I hear? <laughs> no judgment, no. Uh, just wondering, why goats? They're smaller. Goat milk. Ah, there can't be much profit in that. Goat cheese. Mm, there's enough. Besides, I had you. Have. You still have. As I've said. I'm no longer interested in that particular revenue stream. We're the ones who sever ties. And you don't want us severing ties. I believe I made myself clear. You know, 
I feel like we've had this conversation a couple of times now, and you still don't seem to get that I'm done with this line is just going to look really silly at the end of the day. You were asking me about goats. <sighs> yeah, goats. I don't like them. They like to play. They'll eat just about anything. The milk's an acquired taste, but I've always liked the cheese. Meat's good with the right curry. A friend taught me that a while back. Hmm. So, you like them for the utility? I like them because they're playful. Want to get started? Hmm? Started? Milking. Oh, hey, really? <laughs> I've always wanted to try that. <laughs> well, here's your chance. My goats are smart. They know what's up, so we'll just walk up. Um, here they are. Come on. Now they'll just take their positions here like they should. Got feet all ready for them. Just uh, you take a seat there. Uh, eh, not very comfortable. <laughs> mm, suppose not. Well, now that we're seated, all you gotta do is grab the teat with your thumb and forefinger. And pull? No, 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 don't pull. Just sort of rhythmically squeeze with the rest of your fingers gently pushing the milk out ah. huh. like this <laughs> just like that yes all you got to do is do that till the goat's out of milk huh this is kind of nice i found it relaxing well, i think i could get used to this well, why don't you say what why okay, not mine's filling to up too i don't know well, why I'm not doing anything you? sure <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some folks might take issue with that. Well, can't make everybody happy. Better than ending up shot. Shoot what? him. <laughs> what? Hey. Oh. Hey. Oh. <laughs> oh. Gun down. <laughs> Life over just like that. I usually get to shoot back. Well, we all wind up dead in the end, don't we? I'd rather live as long as possible. What good is that? Living? What good is living if you ain't happy? He says I'm not happy. Well, I'm not. You could be. I don't think I could. I nope. get the feeling if you haven't. Well, that does it for the goats. Google goat pupils. Still, uh, yeah, they're still creepy. What I've been saying. I haven't stopped. Changed your mind? No. No, I have not. I get the feeling that. Our character, the one we're playing as, is okay with dying at the end of this. Mm -hmm. And I also get the feeling that this guy is not a very emotional person and not very attached to people. But, you know, he's going to put some bare minimum effort into not killing someone he likes. Yeah, he's going to, well, <laughs> I, th I think it's actually that he views him as useful. Yeah, it's, it's that he's yeah. useful, but also I think... It's like, oh, this, like, really useful tool I have is kind of, like, a little broken. But I also kind of like it. But also, if there's any sort of effort I have to put in, I will throw it away. Yeah, well, I think that that's part of what this, what they're showing with his character is that he views things as useful and, util and the utility of things. So if a person doesn't have usefulness anymore... Then kill him, yeah. Mm -hmm. But if this guy... I think he... A, he's trying to maintain an asset that he finds very valuable. Yeah. But I think at some level, this guy does enjoy the company of our character. Mm -hmm. Probably not as strongly as the average everyday person who doesn't feed dead bodies to pigs. But it seems as if both these characters are really emotionally muted, but they did have some kind of friendship form within their own abilities what with being murderers and all. Mm. And he very much sees this, the character we're playing as, as a utility that he doesn't want to let go. But I think we're also trying to convince him that there is value in someone just being your friend. Yeah. And he probably thinks that, but has it so like buried in his head that he can't think it right now because he's probably lived a life where like that wasn't something he could do. In my opinion, I think that it's less about that he finds him as a friend. It's more that, like, you know, like, oh, if I'm going to be around this person, I'm going to enjoy their company. But if I can't be around them anymore, oh well. okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, like, we're trying to 
kind of show him these different ways that like, hey, just because something isn't like a, you know, a tool for you anymore. Doesn't mean that you have to kill it. Yeah. But What's do the you wheelbarrow think... for? Hauling, hauling what? Fertilizer. No, shit. Cow pies. Cow pies. I think if we use anything that's um, utilitarian, that's going to go against what we're trying to do and show that like, this barrel could be used for anything or for fun. It doesn't have to. Poop Just is, like other poop. things. Are you saying poop is fun? Yeah, cow pies. Cow pies. <laughs> cow pies? Proverbially. And what are we supposed to do with this crap? We are yeah. going to fertilize. Well, not now. It's October, but we're going to put it in a nice big pile where it belongs. Uh, we? Well, you did say you wanted to help. Yeah, guess I did. So help. Pick up that shovel over there. We'll shovel it in, wheel it out, dump it, and we're good. And you do this every day? Mm-hmm. Most every day. And you want to keep doing this every day? It's my routine. Shoveling shit. Someone's got to do it. <laughs> that, uh, that isn't the first time you've told me that. You know, it kind of reminds me of, like, when you have coworkers, and it's like, you know, you can enjoy their company when you're at the office, but when you're not at the office, you don't miss them whatsoever. And if they're gone, you're not really going to care. You know? I think on some level, very, like, deep and not very strong, this guy doesn't want to kill us. But, like, if there was any sort of, even the slightest bit of inconvenience, he'd be like, ah, oh, well, gotta kill you. Mm -hmm. And just the fact that instead of us saying, like, no, we won't do it anymore, he goes, oh, okay, and just shoots us in the head. <laughs> yeah. That, like, shows... I'm not saying he's like, oh, you're our best friend. I think he just kind of goes, just, like, the slightest hint of, like, I don't really want to kill him. Like, I don't... I kind of like this guy. But, you know, if this goes on any further... Hmm. Well, he's going to try to convince us because he wants to Vietnam. keep us on. Yeah. You know, I did some digging on you. Personally, not the shit kind. <laughs> know what I found? Uh, I reckon you'll tell me. You went back. Hmm. What happened that day in the valley? You saw the report. I'm not gonna talk about it. Come on. No. <sighs> Suit yourself. But you got a medal. You didn't have to go back. Had a wife and kid here. In a time where most of us were trying to figure out how to stay home, you went back. You going somewhere with this? Hmm. Think it'd be fun if you told me why? While we're shoveling shit? I was Trauma, here. bro! You know that, I reckon. I was in the hospital, staring at the ceiling. Magazines next to me on the bed. And I... I had this, uh... Moment. A moment of clarity. A revelation. Uh-huh. And the revelation was this. Them protesters weren't doing a damn thing. The, the hippies and the, the bands weren't changing anything. You know who was? Uh, the Vietnamese? The Russians? No. No, the news. You hit someone hard enough day in, day out with the realities of war, pretty soon they'll tire of it. Vietnam? That was our first time that close to war. So... Uh, Figured, uh, you figured you ain't the only one of us who's killed people. Well, why do you think I offered you that job back in 74? Turned it down for the same reason I went back. They were telling us our patriotic duty was to go and fight for our country. Well, that's what I did. You weren't recon when you went back, though. Went back with a camera. Talked them into letting me help with the press, keeping them safe and all that. So I did. And I took pictures. Took all the pictures I could. I fought in a different way. Oh, that's interesting. You want to push the wheelbarrow? This wheelbarrow is on wheels. I have no choice in where we're going. What? We pulled 
out of Nam, didn't we? Mm-hmm. And now you're here. Great big war hero. Shuffling shit. Yeah. Shoveling shit. Somebody earlier said that that guy looks like Jimmy Neutron's dad. Oh, yeah, he does. <laughs> the tree. Do you know what this is? A uh, tree? Well, you ever seen a tree like it? A, a tree's a tree. Remember all them roasted chestnuts at Christmas? Oh, sure, sure. I mean, I kind of figured. Been by often enough to see the chestnuts myself. Why? Is it special to you? This is an American chestnut tree. Oh, hey, Saul. Uh, he's telling us about his American chestnut tree. American, huh? Hmm. Thought they all died. What? Who the fuck are you? <laughs> you remembered. Pays to remember things. Like the American chestnut. Um, I, I, I'm a little lost here. Oh, a couple weeks back, Saul came by, said you couldn't make it. Business as usual. Saul had a bucket of chestnuts, asked if pigs could eat them, so we got to talking and I told him about chestnuts. Uh-huh. And what did you learn? Pork tastes better with chestnuts. And most American chestnuts have died off. It's true. Long before you or I was born, the American chestnut was prized for the quality of its wood. Mm. Jimmy'd like that. Oh, that he would, that he would. Oh. But this tree, there ain't many like it left. American chestnuts almost all died out because of the Asian fungus around 1900 or so. The chestnut blight. Thank you for the subscription, Solace Seeker, for 43 months. We really appreciate 43 it. 43 months? Thank you. Holy moly, that's like... That's power. It's a very... That's almost four years. I think, yeah. Wow. That's wow. What, like a couple hundred thousand trees? Oh, billions. Okay, I'm dying at the human proportions in this game. See, I'm not crazy. Everyone's no. shaped weird. These people Four all look billion really trees. They don't. Snuffed out practically overnight. A lumberjack suddenly out of work in places like West Virginia. Those economies never recovered. Uh, I thought West Virginia was coal country. Some logging too before it all died off. Now there's trees like the general here, making nuts year round. And I feed them to the reds, and they grow nice and fat and tasty. Seems lonely. Well, it is lonely. Heartbreakingly lonely. To know everyone else you ever loved has passed on. So, I look after him, and he looks after me, and... I don't know. Sadie and I, we... We talked about being buried here, you know. Changed your mind? Brody's grave was enough for me. But, uh, I don't know. I thought about having him moved. I, I don't, uh, I don't know. You've got plenty of years left in you yet. So, what's the moral of the story? With the, the trees, I mean. Be wary of outsiders. Heck no. There are trees out there that are blight resistant. Maybe even the general here, but I'm too afraid to find out. With enough time and horticultural understanding, we could have done something. Preserved all these trees? Maybe we could have. They are magnificent. It's just... It's just that... I don't know. I wasn't trying to teach you a lesson or anything. I just... But you did make a point of it. I did do that. I just, hmm. it's a part of me is all. And God willing to live for a hundred more years. I'm, I don't know. I see myself as a custodian of sorts. And one day I'm, I just. So I'll go ahead and wait for me at the van. Hmm? Hey. Why are you looking at my forehead? Look. Look at me. You're thinking about dying. Thinking you can pass this responsibility off to someone else. You don't have to do this. Give the tree another decade of your time. Well, the time of my demise is sad. Someone ought to know about the tree. Jimmy'd love to know about this. Well, Jimmy would cut it down. Rude. He would. Please. Don't tell him. 
Hey, I'm good at keeping secrets, but Jimmy's Jimmy. Please, let me rest here. And if there's a way, a way to, oh, I don't know. Okay, okay. Hey, you got more to show me, right? This guy would feel nothing about killing us. <laughs> yeah. He would go, oh, God, now, uh, well, he was kind of cool. The garage, huh? No tour would be complete without the garage. I have to ask, why a sports truck? I think they're called coupe utility, but, uh, you mean why not a sports car? Yeah, I mean, I always figured you'd have a midlife crisis like the rest of us. Sports car, motorcycle, an affair, something like that. Couldn't really say why I love these so much. Saw mine one day, fell in love. With that? Mm-hmm. Had to bring her home with me. I'll admit, it has a charm to it. Can you see but you? she won't run. No? Well, pop the hood. Let's take a look. You're serious? Sure. Already had my midlife crisis. <laughs> Motorcycle? Sports car. And these puppies, well, you know, they're similar enough. Some of them even use the same engine. We can figure this out. All right. What do you think a uh, midlife crisis looks like for somebody who's in the mob? <laughs> Yeah, got a sports car, had yeah, eight or seven mistresses, and killed them all. Yeah. Can you get me that drop light? My eyes aren't what they were. Attached to the hood. Hold on. Hold on. Yep, sure thing. <sighs> Thank you. Cool. Saul's a good kid. Hmm? What's that? Saul was a good kid. I like him. It was nice him coming by. Yeah? That's good to hear. Never met anyone with so much promise. Never? In my entire life. Saul's dad was a good man. Didn't think his kid had it. As a boy, he was too soft. But then he got older, graduated college, really came into his own. Eager. More capable than he knows. Hmm. Great listener. <laughs> Can you believe we were his age once? <laughs> Hard to admit. When I was young, I thought I knew everything. Yeah? And now? Today I learned from you and him about chestnuts. Well, I learned something new every day, I suppose. You check the spark plugs? Mm, give me a second. Uh, what about your boy? Bill? Oh, he's fine, I guess. <laughs> you guess? Hey, how old is he again? Born in 60, so, uh, 32 as of September. Huh. Roy would have been about his age. Yeah? Yeah. Well, well what's this about you and Bill? Oh, he don't want to talk to me no more. What? Bill? Toe-headed little guy? Always friendly and outgoing? That Bill? It's, uh, it's about Sadie. Ah. Yeah. Hey, might if I ask you a completely unrelated question? Mm -hmm. What's with the airplanes at your neighbor's place? Oh, Chuck's farm. Chuck? Huh. Yeah, what's with all the planes? There's no runway around here. Uh, you know how farmers are. Hey, have you checked the air filter? Yeah. And, yeah, I know how you are. You got plenty of junk, too. But I've never seen anyone else with, uh, uh, what are they, World War II bombers or something? I think he has a B-36. No kidding. Wow. You got no idea what a B-36 is, have you? <laughs> have the foggiest. Well, a B-36 is a big old bomber made out of magnesium. Biggest America ever had. Took two train tankers to fill one up. And you could fly from Monday to Thursday without refueling. So why does Chuck have one in his backyard, plus all the others? I asked him about that once. Hmm. Okay. Wire's loose here. Where? Right there. So, what'd he say? Oh, uh... <laughs> dead navigator came to him in a dream. <laughs> what? Mm-hmm. Dead navigator from the Korean War came to him in a dream, said the planes were in danger of being lost, and it was up to Chuck to save them. So, Chuck's crazy. <laughs> Well, eccentric, maybe, but, uh, well, 
Do you believe in ghosts? If I did, I'd have a different job. Yeah. Why, do you? Well, I figure we all move on in some way. Energy is neither created nor lost and all that. So you're saying a dead navigator came to a farmer in the middle of nowhere, no offense, and told him that it was his job to preserve airplanes? Yep. So now there's a bunch of planes on a crazy coots farm. And he keeps them safe. Can you think of a better place for him to be? Hmm. No. Want to try running it? Nah. I trust you. Uh, suit yourself. Where to next? I like that. I trust you. Oh. We have a gun. Shotguns, huh? <laughs> I always like shotguns. Blanked? Oh. Still do. I like nice try. Guns, so <laughs> when it's for sport. Got a few of those. Oh, yeah? What's your favorite? Them big slab-sided ones. They have a, a charisma. What about you? Ah, uh, nothing special, really. 357s when I can. But this is a shotgun. Yep. I figured we could shoot some skeet. Always like shooting. Taught Bill to shoot this way. You're a good father. Could have been better. Name a father that couldn't. So, how do we do this? Uh, who's going first? You can go first. All right, then. <laughs> this is more my speed. Hanging out, shooting guns. Maybe a few beers next time. No. I'm not sure guns and beers mix, Frank. Thank you. <laughs> oh, sure they do. Like peanut butter and very dangerous chocolate. Next time. Trust me, next time. And there isn't going to be a next time. Mm. Oh, there's always a next time. This is it. After today, we are done. I've tried to tell you. I keep trying to tell you. There is no out. There is no done. You keep doing this. You can never do anything again. It's permanent. Kaput. Yeah, I know. We're going to die. It's kaput. You don't mean it. If that's the way it's got to be. You have a choice. You haven't listened to a word I've said. I've been listening. I've been listening all morning. I've been listening to you talk about being sad and lonely and refusing to listen to reason. I have my reasons. Your reasons aren't any good. But they're mine. Lock me to my car. He doesn't like that we're not doing what he says. Yeah, but he, yeah, because I wouldn't say he's like yeah. as upset as other people would be. And he does seem upset that he can't control us. But he also seems upset that he can't control us to force us to be alive. And he's mm -hmm. like, I don't want to kill you. I don't wanna! Why are you making me do this? I hate it! God! Can't you just be chill and like bury the animals? I mean the people? Whatever? This is it then. It is. Why? Why are you doing this? Because I need to. <laughs> We're friends, goddammit. You don't get to get all stoic on me. I know losing her was hard, but there's gotta be something. Gotta be. I can't take care of the farm like I used to. There isn't much point anymore. So sell the farm. Move into the city. Meet someone new. Do you... believe in hell? What? Huh? Do you believe in hell? No. Mm. I'm not scared of hell, if that's what you mean. I didn't ask if you were scared. I asked if you believe. I don't know. Well, I do. And I think... <laughs> I think doing this... I think that's where I'm headed. And oh, no. what? You think you can buy your way into heaven? I can't take back what I've done. What I can do is do something right. Why? Because I want to see her again. That's all. I just want to see her again. Oh. And I figure... I'll do one right thing with my life, just one thing. Maybe I'll get to see her again. 
One more time. Baby, she's in hell too. You'll be in hell together. She was there for all the pig eating. How do you know? How do you know if any of this is true? I don't know. But I got the notion, and the notion's got me. So, the least I can do is uh, tell you adios. That's, That's the name of the that. game. What else is there to say? Not much, I guess. No. All right, then. Have it your way. Hmm. I'll be back this evening. You... Get an afternoon. Do whatever you gotta do. Just, uh, leave the door unlocked. Okay, I Anders from Dragon yeah. Age 2. Right? Remember that? Mm-hmm. He was like, M -M. if you leave the door unlocked, that means you wanna fuck. And you're like, what? Wait, hold on. He looks like Phoenix Wright, but from the wrong angle. <laughs> All right, let's enjoy our life before we die. Do, 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 we're going to die tonight. I guess Kill we're going to... Kill somebody in the cellar. What? I assume that we're probably going to go look at a bunch of memories of our dead wife. Yeah. <laughs> she's in heaven. Get I'm nice. going to hell. Baby, she's going to hell, too. I'm sure she was there for all the pig body eating. I don't think she would. I think he would have, helped, like... Kept it a secret? Kept it a secret. Nah. I I believe that he would be like, oh, honey, it's pig eating human flesh day today, so you just stay inside when the assassin comes, okay? Okay, sweetheart. Do you want me to make some jam for the assassin? The fish. You don't get married. Well, you know what? I did watch Who the Bleep Did I Marry, and a lot of these women did not know. Yeah. I, I just think that the way he talks about her, it doesn't seem like he would have wanted to burden her. With the fact that he was feeding humans to the pigs? Yeah. Would you eat a pig? Well, obviously the answer's no. Okay, so how would you feel if you ate a pig and you found out later if that pig ate a human? Nothing I can do about it, so why get upset? It's true. I already ate it. I mean... Would you feel gross, though? No. Would you feel gross if someone told you it was a pig, but really it was a person? I'm going to be honest. I feel weirder about eating shrimp than I would about <laughs> eating people. I think shrimp and lobster are grosser than eating people. They are bugs. They are bugs. They are ocean bugs. And people are like, mmm, it's so good. No, you're eating a bug. No, no, no. Here's what I don't understand is that it's not like... It's not even just that people are like, oh, we eat them as a food source. Like, they're considered like a... Delicacy? Yeah, like expensive. And I'm just like, what? No, I can still see their poop inside their bodies, and you want me to eat that? Yeah. They're water cockroaches. Literally. Literally water cockroaches. Yeah. And, uh, yes, I would definitely eat... Oh, would you eat lab-grown human meat? Hmm. I don't know how to catch a fish. Catch Admiral. Maybe you have to leave it out there? I don't know. Did you Wait, do you have to put something on it? Oh, good question. Maybe there's a tackle box or something? Um. Before you die, figure out how to catch a fish, idiot. Alright, try putting it out there again. Catch the fish. So, uh, yeah, I think you have to leave it, right? Oh, and then when there's the line tension, yeah. Oh, hold on. I like it. This game is two hours, except if you don't know how to fucking fish, and oh. then it's four hours. Yeah, there you go. Catch. Hell yeah. Put the fish in the cooler. No, is this the cooler? Yep. Catch Admiral this time. Alright. Come on.
<laughs> Maybe next fight. Oh, good point. You're dying in six hours, dude. Why do you have to take the two fish with you? <laughs> You're killing them for no reason. Maybe we can give them to the mob guy. Be like, hey, I caught you some this fish. This is a man who feeds human bodies to his own pigs and then eats the pigs. I don't think he cares. Mm -hmm. I think his moral compass is a little skewed. Come on. So, is the concern with eating a pig that's even eating a human disease, or is it like just the I don't know, just being weirded out like... that you ate a, a person, <clears throat> or the yeah? So the ick Ooh, factor. Nice catch. I'm concerned that you seem to be confused as to what would be upsetting about eating a human being. No. Eating a pig that ate a human being. Oh, I don't know. Just like, I know the same, I don't know, something about it. Just like, oh. I'm not like, saying I'm like, I think it's because pigs are so similar to humans. And it's not a containment factor. It's more like this, Come on. this pig is made out of what once was a person. I don't know. I, I think it's just like a primal thing. Yeah. It's like just primal, like that pig ate a person, <sighs> I ate a pig. I mean, plenty of animals eat poop and we still eat them. It's uh, true. I also just like this isn't to sound like weird, but I also just feel like uh, not necessarily with people, but a lot of like different cultures around the world eat different animals or consider different animals like off limits <coughs> or, or whatever. And I find that really interesting that it's like nice catch. I'm very concerned that you're going to end this conversation with, and that's why I don't think it's that big of a deal that we eat people, and I've been eating people this whole time, and no one's complained, and I'm like, what? Because that's like, it really sounds And so like, far, no one has noticed, so what's the problem? I think it really seems like you're you're going down that's the line where I'm going with it. And like, you know, what's the difference? Like, different cultures, different... Yeah, and that's why cannibalism, you know, it's just a matter of opinion. Yeah, like, okay, humans are animals. And am I an animal eater? Yes. <laughs> like, wait... <laughs> What's the difference between eating a person through the the Come whatever on. of a pig? Yeah. It's still pig meat. Oh, this is the big boy, I can tell. <laughs> Finally some good cannibal representation. Yeah. Awesome. Nice catch. Yes. yes, this is Admiral. Awesome. We did it. Alright, I guess we go back now. Just to somewhere. We have six hours. Like, honestly, if you said, if you put two dishes in front of me and one of them had a lobster and the other one had, like, a rib and they were like, it's a human rib, I'd probably rather eat the human rib. As long as all, like, the disease thing, like, that, the disease thing is what I'd be most concerned about, that you'd get, like, sick or something. This is interesting because <laughs> I asked my <laughs> friends how much would it cost for you to he eat a human brain. <laughs> when did you ask? Okay, I'm the weirdo. Okay, but I asked them and they were like, I don't know, $500,000 or whatever. And I'm like, but you don't know where the body came from? Like the food itself is clean, but like you don't know where it came from. Uh huh. And they're like, oh, $500,000, 600000 you're like, I'd do it for free. If you, <laughs> if you, if I had to choose between a lobster and a human butt and a human rib. <laughs> So I see, this is, are you sure? <laughs> are I, not? You know what it is? I think also, I'm one of those people that like, if there's like, it's kind of like eating um, a whole shrimp oh, versus man. like a piece of shrimp and sushi when I, that I can't now. see it, Bang. you know? Like, or preparing a turkey where you actually have to like pull the head off of it and all that stuff versus like a piece of chicken. If it's just like a piece of meat, you're just getting like way very pro cannibalism. No, I'm saying that's why. And your why arguments are extremely well thought out. I'm I'm concerned and scared. <laughs> We've As if you've thought about like why can't I eat human flesh? Why can't I? No, uh, <laughs> you're your threshold for like be of being like all right. I guess I'll eat human flesh is having to eat 
not human flesh. Like, <laughs> I'm concerned. I'm scared. Did I? Did I have to butcher it myself? If I have to butcher it myself, that's a whole different thing. Yeah, but you wouldn't want to butcher any animal, which doesn't exactly. help your case. I think that speaks to laziness more than disgust. No, 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 no. I also, f- I, I mean, Brandy I've cooked Smith. like a whole bird, like turkey good before. Boy. So that means you could cook, cook a whole person good too. Uh, You've been real good to me. You know that? <laughs> mm-hmm. Brought me a lot of good luck. Good times. Without you, I don't, uh, I do not know. I want to thank you. I want to thank you for all you done. Gonna go ahead and leave the barn door open behind me when I go. You want to leave, you go find someone else. I figure I'll just, uh, I'll leave you to it. Oh. Uh, My horse is like, well, see, I guess you're dying. Thank uh, you for the Bits Blue Shirt 616. Oh, hey, Geek Remix are streaming something. Let's check it out. And they're talking about cannibalism. I am not surprised in the least. <laughs> Thank you. There's a little bit too much thought going. Look, but, oh. We, okay. I thought Stacy was joking, but she's serious and I'm terrified. No, yeah. no, no, no. no. You, everyone's acting like this is a surprise. We have actually talked about cannibalism on several videos. Yeah, over as the- a joke, but you seem to have really thought this out. Really, like, really thought about what's happening have a lot of time to think also i watched a lot of videos about the the you know the the people who got stuck in the andes mountains and they fantasizing no not about fantasizing. an opportunity no, 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 to no, no, eat but human you, flesh but like you know it's like when you watch videos like that and you're like huh like what would i do if i was in okay, that okay i resend my invitation to eat me if i die <laughs> if you kill me you I can not- only eat me if i die Okay, because I have... Oh, thank you for subscribing, Facon, for three months. Yeah, I finally caught your stream. I seem to get any notifications from Twitch Lady. I don't know why. Yeah, I, I've been hearing a lot about that, too. Yeah. But you know how I said if we were both, like, dying and then I die first and you can eat my body? Mm-hmm. You cannot... If you kill me, you can't eat me. Hmm. Permission withdrawn. Oh, so this is kind of like a life insurance policy where it's like if... You know, if the person dies in a certain way, they can't. If the wife kills the husband, she can't cons- co- collect his life insurance policy. Yeah, it's cheating. <laughs> These are real phone numbers. Oh, come on, pick up. The boy. Pick up. Dad. Bill. I. Well, now how'd you know it was me? Caller ID. I. I don't know what that is. <laughs> no. Tells me who's calling. Huh, that's, uh, that's some real fancy stuff you got there. Uh Uh-huh. Listen, I'm busy. Why are you calling? Oh. Oh, just, uh, hadn't talked in a while. And whose fault is that? Did you see the things that he wasn't able to say? It's Mm -hmm. sad. Managed to let her go. I, can't we just, can't we talk? What is there to say? Hi, son. How are the grandkids? How are they? Oh, by the way, I put your mom in a rest home so I could stay there and take care of my goats and my pigs and my stupid horse. Because, God forbid, I actually look after my sick wife. That's not fair. You put her in a home. You decided she wasn't good enough for you, and you put her in a home. She was getting perfect if they found out. Oh. Yeah. He can't say why she had to be put. So she did know about the dead bodies. I, no, I, I didn't know what to do. The doctors there, they would. How hard could it be? Alzheimer's isn't some terrifying boogeyman. Uh, it's kind of hard. you who told me to stay with the ones you love, no matter what? So what? You didn't love her anymore? No, I don't... Uh, she I, was scared of me, Bill. She couldn't remember who I was. And one day she woke up and she looked at me and she screamed and, oh. I didn't get the impression that she, that meant she knew. I thought it was like if he he was just like, if the mob found out that she, you know, was dealing with this, then they would just assume she was a liability. 
Um, she was scared of me, Bill. She couldn't. Re so this bottom here, it's hard to see. So I just read that out loud. Yeah. Don't you dare. You gave her up. You gave her up to doctors and nurses. You know what they do to people in homes. What else could I have done? What else? I took care of her until I couldn't anymore. So this is what he can't say. Aww. It was the best home money could buy. Money. You and your damn money. Cared more about being a rich pig farmer than the people you were supposed to love. How do you think I made all that money, Bill? No such thing as a rich pig farmer, at least not in the meat. Mm -hmm. I did everything for you, too. Hey. I loved you both. I did everything for you. Everything. Yeah, right. Bill, I, I, I didn't want this call to... You wanted to put my mom in a home, so I'm not sure what you want matters. You could have picked B her Bill, up. Bill, Bill, I just, I just called to say... Say what? Sorry? Did you know I visited her? I found out where you put her, and I visited her. Please don't say she talked. They're listening. Please don't say she talked. So oh, she did she know. she did know. Yeah. Hmm. Um, so wh why is it a big deal that he found out where he put her? Like, Well, so Bill's 32 right now. I got the impression, I don't know, how long has she been gone? A while, probably, but I'm questioning why, um, why wouldn't he, why did he have to find out, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, they said you visited sometimes. She was my wife, Bill. She cried, Dad. She cried. She wept, and she sobbed, and she kept asking me where you were. She was so scared, Dad. She was so scared. She wanted you to take her home. The doctor said sometimes she was lucid, but I couldn't. She was lucid, Dad. And I held her hand as she sobbed herself to sleep. And I kept holding her hand until they told me I had to go. Where were you? Taking care of your precious chestnuts? Feeding your heritage breed pigs? No, 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 Bill. Bill, I... Save it. Talk to your goats or your pigs or whatever it is you do. Um, I miss... I, as the chat is pointing out, he probably didn't want Bill talking to the mom in case she talked. Yeah, I love you, Bill. I love you more than I can ever say. If I could tell you, I... If I could tell you, if I could only tell you, but he can't say those things. I just want to tell you goodbye, Bill. I just wanted to t tell you goodbye, Bill. I I've got some of your stuff all boxed up. If you wouldn't mind coming by in a few days to pick it up. We'll see. Goodbye, son. You'll never make this right, Dad. <sighs> I'm still trying. All right, so he wants to kill himself because he put his wife in a home, basically. Yeah. Call the neighbor. Hey, neighbor, can you take care of the dead bodies for me real quick? Hello? Hey, Edie. It's... Oh, hey, you. How are you doing? You know, I was just talking about you with Garth the other day. I said, Garth... You know, we ought to visit. Yeah, well, Edie, listen, uh, I don't mean to interrupt. It's just uh, uh, I'm on a tight schedule, and uh, uh, I need you to do me a favor, right? A favor? Sure. What you need? Uh, I'm going to be out of town for a few days. Oh? Finally taking my advice and visiting family? I won't be coming back. He can't say. Can you take care of the animals? I was uh, wondering if you and Garth could... Make sure the animals were fed and watered, you know, that kind of thing. Oh, sure, sure. We ain't got much going on. Thanks, Edie. Listen, uh, I, uh... Oh. Evan! Evan! What are you doing? Get down from there. <laughs> Sorry. Cats. <laughs> anyway, what were you saying? Goodbye, I was saying goodbye. Would you mind taking care of the animals? Yeah, yeah, the animals. Uh, I got them fed and watered for today. They should be good for tomorrow, too. B but if it's too much of an imposition... Not at all, not at all. We're happy to be imposed upon. You've been a good neighbor for so long. I'm glad you called me today. 
In fact, just the other day, I said to Garth, I said, if we don't visit, then we should host. Reach out, say hello, put together a little neighborly get-together. And you know what he said? He said, well, Edie, if we did that, we'd just... Oh, you know what? Let me go get him for you. It's better when he tells it. There's so many things I wish I could say. Hi. I'm going to miss you, Eddie. You Thank you, Eddie. Your favorite neighbor? Come say hello. What do you mean you don't want to talk? But it's... Thank you for the bits, Blue Shirt. Also, someone should tell Stacy her hair looks amazing because it looks amazing. Sorry, Garth's out working. Now, what was I saying again? Hey, you should drop on by next Saturday afternoon. We're going out to the Harvest Festival with the grandkids, and I know how lonely it's been. What with Sadie gone and all, you should come with. Well, I appreciate the thought, Edie. I don't think I'll be back in town by then, though. Sorry. Oh, that's too bad. It's been real nice seeing you coming back to church again. Oh, it's, uh... It's been real nice being welcomed back. But now I gotta go. You know, chores and such. You know how it is. Oh, I sure do. Well, come on over sometime. Just got some gooseberries in. We're making pies, and we'd love to have you. I know they're your favorite. <laughs> that they are. Gotta go now. See ya. Thank you for the subscriptions, Visitor Q. Very much appreciated. Thank you. Oh, no. Oh, this is the dead dog. Hey, okay. Brody. How you been? Oh. I know I don't drop by as much as I ought. I ain't got an excuse. We had some good times, Brody. I remember Doug coming over, remarking on your coat. Said you didn't need no training. He'd put you with his bird dogs and you'd figure out what to do. Well, he was right. You came a waddling over out of that lake, duck in your mouth, proud as everything. You wouldn't give that duck up. But you got the hang of it. Uh, uh, Doug and I, we had a falling out. Haven't spoken to him since. Well, he passed, so no point reminiscing, I guess. Yikes. You want to know something, Brody? I always... I always believe dogs go to heaven, because all dogs is fundamentally good. Like, even the mean ones, heaven. they're good too. They're just, you know, hurt or starving or, you know, sick or scared. So, uh, I know where you are. And I know Sadie's probably with you right Baby, now. Baby, Sadie's I gonna wrong, wait for Brody. you in hell, just like you. Don't worry. I've done a lot of wrong. And I don't know if I can make up for it. I want to tell you I'll see you soon, but... The truth is, I do not know. I don't know if I was good enough for you. Or her. I don't know if I did my best. So, uh... uh this may be goodbye. Um, I love you. And I miss you all the same. Wow. Get the shotgun from the cellar and, and cook, make a meal. And cook a meal. I think that's a rifle. That's the shotgun. <laughs> Look at me recognizing types of guns. Woo! What are you, some sort of gun? You're a per cannibal yeah. gun nut. I'm a, that's me, gun nut. Never shot a gun. I was hoping to start shooting everything, but. Cook a meal. Are we gonna microwave? Oh. Is it it still says place it, so is it in the right spot? Or Yeah. Oh. Oh 
Oh my god. <laughs> Come on. You can do it. Oops. Um... Floor carrots are the best carrots. It doesn't matter. We're an old single man. Wife is dead. We don't. We're barely well, making it. We're gonna die anyway. So you know, our last meal is very sad. That's okay. <laughs> bag of what? What's yeah. In what's, there? what's in the bag? Is that? I literally have no idea. Put it in the pot. Why not? What is it? It won't let me. Okay. What is, oh, it's a burrito. burrito. Okay. <laughs> Bur <laughs> yeah, okay, so we can't have burrito stew. That makes sense. Uh, oh, was I supposed to, like, cut things? <laughs> Oops. Um. Potato, pick up. Okay, I don't know. Um. Oh. <laughs> so our stew is gonna be like just a whole steak and whole carrots in water. Yeah. I think. What? What's wrong with that? <laughs> oh. Oh. Are you for? I don't do all this? How? Do I have to restart or something? What do we do? Can you, and you can't like open the pot, right? No. Say cooks in pan, put it all in the pot, start the kitchen timer. Okay. It, it's cooked, <laughs> I guess. It's fine. He's gonna come over like, this is the worst fucking food I've ever had. <laughs> Place the meal at the dining room. Look how terrible it looks. Mmm. Mm, sit down at table. <laughs> it's past six PM. I don't know. Okay, are we dead? Or is Whoa. There... He went through the wall. I wonder if there was a way, to... there probably was a way to convince him to no. not kill us. No? no? It's linear. Oh, it is? Yeah. Oh, that was a like, fun little game. I know that people were also asking, what did you have to say in order to open up those dialogue options, but you can't. Oh, okay. That's, yeah. Yeah. It, that, like, the reason that they show them as not... It's available thing. is because it's supposed to show you like there's things that he wants to say but feels like he can't. Mm. Um, that was really enjoyable. I liked that. That was very kind, quick and painless. Yeah, that uh, that's assassins' love language is quick kills. A lot of a lot of people don't know about the sixth love language, which is killing you quickly instead of slowly. Well, and it's also like. Making sure you don't see it coming. It's just boop. Imp emissary, we getting e eaten by piggies? Yeah. What yeah. we're hearing is our body being eaten by the pigs. I like that. That was great. Mm -hmm. I think you were able to learn a lot about the characters through different things, especially the guy who's going to kill us, mm -hmm. about like how the guy sees the world. Like, ah, oh, sorry to see you go, but you're not useful anymore. Boom. Yeah. But I care enough to kill you quickly. And I care enough to give you time to say goodbye. Yeah. That was really enjoyable. And I care enough to clip through the wall. That's my special ability. <laughs> we really didn't see him coming. Yeah, literally, he just... <laughs> <laughs> At least we gave our pigs one last meal. <laughs> that was nice and sad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I think it was interesting that... They portrayed people, these characters, exactly the, the way they are without trying to make them seem like both like, oh, redeeming people or 
really horrible, awful people. Like, they are horrible, awful people. This is a fact. But they didn't, like, make them be like, yeah! You know, they were like, yeah, I kill people. I, what I liked about this was that um, they actually didn't really talk at all about the things that they had done. Uh, most of the things that they talked about were, like, their hobbies or, like, stories about their past or, like, him, like, thinking about his life. Like... We really didn't spend a whole lot of time thinking, like, talking to each other about, like, the work that connected us. Mm -hmm. And I thought that that was kind of an interesting choice because it's like... Well, they did talk about the work connecting them, but not really about the dead bodies so much as, like, their specific interactions. Mm -hmm. Rather than, like, you know, say they work at a paper company. Oh, paper, paper. They were like, remember the first day you were here? You know, that Mm -hmm. kind of stuff. But I just think it's, like, he didn't really go on, like, a whole speech about, you know, this is wrong and I can't do it anymore, blah, 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 like, anything like that. It was more just, like, I'm going to talk about my life Mm -hmm. and how I feel and, Well, he said he wasn't much of, like, a crier or emotional thing. He's a fixer. Mm -hmm. And I think in his mind, getting himself out of the equation kind of fixes things and that makes him feel a little better. Yeah. Um, Which is actually kind of sad because if you think about it, that's like a very common like suicidal. Yeah, if I take myself out of the equation, people will be fixed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Favorite scene conversation. I think the hobby one and the horse one at the beginning of the game definitely explains really well who these two characters are, what their motivations are, how they see the world, how they interpret different things. Um how the assassin guy is somebody who just doesn't feel as deeply about other people. Because I think for someone who's an assassin, like, yeah, you're going to not feel as much for people, but also you probably don't allow yourself to feel that much for other people because at any moment someone's going to be like, well, they got to die. You're like, oh, okay, boom. It might be a little safer to actually, like, care about a dog. Mm-hmm. Because no one's going to go, well, you got to assassinate the dog. He knows too much. <laughs> yeah. So it might be a little bit safer to um, have feelings for a dog. I think that the saddest conversation for me was the conversation with his son. Yeah. Because that was just like, like that put so much of it into perspective about like, oh, like this is why he feels terrible it's like so awful and why he doesn't particularly care that the way that this is going to end for him is him dying i think if his wife had died i don't know from cancer or from just like in a car accident that's something that didn't compromise her brain so that he would have to do that i think he would just continue to feed dead bodies to pigs Mm -hmm. but specifically because he had to put her in a home in order to stop her from accidentally telling someone stuff. And he felt like he'd abandoned her. And his son felt like he abandoned her. Yeah. Yeah. And that, I think that specifically is what made him want to, like, end it and let, and let that guy kill him. Yeah. Because if she had died in a car accident or something, I think he would have been able to move on. Mm-hmm. Not, like, marry someone else or whatever, but just continue his life as it was. Well, because he wouldn't have had any control over that, you know? And, like, whereas with putting her in a home and it kind of, like, torpedoing the relationship with his son. Oh, thank you, Jackson. 